Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Fairfield Friends Meeting for Worship uh, at Home Edition, number two. Um, hope everyone has had a good week. Um, I know this week has felt like one of the longest years of our lives, but uh, we're getting through it. Um, thank you for watching, uh, everyone who's watching now as we debut at 1030. And um, and uh, thank you to all those who, who will watch later. Um, and also thank you for those folks who are watching, who are watching from really far away. We appreciate having you guys back to join with us uh, as we kind of go through this stuff together. Um, hope you're all staying healthy and safe. Um, for today's service, we've really expanded things um, to where it's going to be a little bit more like what you might expect on a, on a typical Sunday uh, meeting for worship at our meeting house. Um, if this is your first time joining us, uh, welcome. Uh, hope, we hope you can join us uh, in person for the real event once this pandemic is over. Uh, you can come find me. I'm John Essex. Uh, come find me, say hi. I'll probably still be wearing the same shirt. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this, this uh, service we've put together. Um, uh, we've had some help uh, from other folks this time. And be sure you stick around after the video for some outtakes because I know this looks super polished and we're just cool and professional with this, but uh, we, we had some, some bumps that were kind of funny along, along the way. Um, to start things off, though, uh, we want to have uh, a bit of a centering um, thought. And uh, my wife, Laura, will, will share um, a nice passage to, to help us center down for worship. Good morning, Fairfield. I have a reading to share with you all. It's from the collection of poems called All Along You Were Blooming by Morgan Harper Nichols. Fall in love with the art of living. Fall in love with letting things be. Fall in love with listening. Be still in the sun where the winds ever gently blow knowing it is here, in moments like this, you are living and you will grow. All right, I wanna introduce uh, Ike Homan to everybody. He has been nice enough to record uh, a little music for us. This is Ike Homan on the piano playing Allegro in D major. Uh, please enjoy. <laughs> So last week, I had uh, sent out an, a request for joys and concerns for folks to share uh, on the video. Um, and they, you can certainly email me uh, your joys and concerns, and I'm happy to share them. Um, I have a few that um, we got some from folks at Fairfield, and I'll, uh, we'll share those now. Um, I'll read this first one, and then you'll see we had some, some additional help um, sharing these joys and concerns with you. Sarah Lookabell writes, my nephew's father-in-law went home from the hospital yesterday. They found a company which would do in-home physical therapy, so that's a prayer answered. Um, he's still on a little bit of oxygen, but very happy to be home with his wife. His wife also tested positive for COVID-19, but her symptoms have been much milder and she remains in home quarantine. She's lonely and people are leaving food and groceries on the porch for her. Keith and Janice Wimmersberger's daughter, Megan, is a social worker who works in a hospital in San Francisco. 
she could really use our extra prayers right now. In addition, the Whipples, Liangs, and the Gabbards all have grown children living in New York City where the virus is especially bad. If we could hold all of them in the light. Good morning. Austin Settles is returning home from New Zealand to be with Paige and Tim in Colorado, so we're thankful for uh, that return back. Mark and Susan Milhouse have returned safely from Florida. We're thankful to hear this. And Mike and Rita Goss are remaining in Arizona to wait things out there. So we pray that they have a restful time as much as possible there. Jan and Ralph Baker's son, Nathan, um, was renting a home and unfortunately it burnt down last week. So we're gonna hold Nathan in the light as he was unhurt, uh, but he did lose many of his things and is now looking for a new place to live. Justin Weber is a former pastor in Western Yearly Meeting, now serving in Iowa Yearly Meeting. He has been diagnosed with COVID-19 and is in the hospital. Uh, let's hold Justin Weber in the light. Good morning. Please hold the meeting's healthcare workers in the light, especially in this time. Rhonda M. Pink would like to share. She writes, as a social worker, I worry about all of the low income, homeless, and other vulnerable children, women, and elders for whom home is not always a safe environment. I worry about the parents who cannot feed their children and those who live alone. My hope in this time of collective loneliness is that we are brave enough to lean into the grief and fear that we are all feeling in these quiet days of quarantine and that we are able to rest in the fact that no feeling is final except hope. The Mark Wiley family, uh, Jill, Rob, and the kids have shared some joys from their time in Norway. Liesl is ready to be moved into the local school from the intensive Norwegian school for immigrants. She'll be starting there after Easter or whenever school starts again. Uh, Gordy's joy is that their landlord bought a new trampoline so that the kids can jump again and be outside in play, even when they can't go to the playground. Andre's joy is staying home from school and he really loves e-learning. Jill loves her job at the British school and they have been wonderful to work with. And finally, Rob did well in his classes in the first semester, and he says that this semester's statistics class is definitely not a joy. Hey, everybody. So we thought we'd change the scenery a little bit for this next part. Um, do you remember earlier this month, like early March, and it is still March, um, early March feels like uh, about a year ago. <laughs> Uh, we got a lot of uh, guidance from the CDC on washing hands, and you should wash your hands for two or for 20 seconds, which is happy birthday twice, uh, which is a way to help you remember how to do that. Uh, and so I thought a nice mixing of joy of birthday and concerns with washing hands is uh, we can sing happy birthday to the folks at Fairfield who have birthdays this week. So we have six people celebrating birthdays this week. So when you are washing your hands, you can sing happy birthday to two of them and we'll all be doing this together this week. And hopefully those folks will feel a little extra blessed uh, having their birthday during this, this COVID-19 uh, um, pandemic. Say hi, Jack. Hi. So <clears throat> Fairfield friends celebrating birthday uh, this week. When you wash your hands, the next time you wash your hands, sing happy birthday to Matthew Ham and Chad Duran. And then the next time you wash your hands, sing, your, sing happy birthday to Ellen Blackader and Eugene Crawley. And then the third time you wash your hands this week, uh, sing happy birthday to Randy Horton and Dominic Lucas. And then you can just cycle through again. So we'll post those, uh, those folks in the video description down below. Um, but anyway, happy birthday to those folks and uh, everyone else enjoy singing to them and having clean, CDC approved, clean hands. Thanks. I wanna thank everybody for sharing their joys and concerns. Uh, thank you to those who've uh, written in to send them. Thank you very much to the folks who helped me read them to you and helped me uh, bring them to you this Sunday morning. Um, now we'd like to switch over to Phil for today's message. Good morning. 
I want to begin by thanking John and Laura and Jack Essex for welcoming me into their home for this um, remote message to Fairfield friends. And welcome to you, friends. We're so grateful that you joined us. I was listening to the news on the radio the other day and a uh, commentator on NPR uh, described social distancing as a new development, something we've never done before. I don't know what world that commentator has lived in, but humanity has been practicing social distancing since we first walked upright. I remember my first experience with social distancing. I was eight years old or thereabouts. My birthday was fast approaching and my father overheard me tell the next door neighbor girl that she wasn't invited to my birthday party. He called me into the house, ordered me to apologize to the girl and to invite her to my party. This was for me the end of the world as I knew it. Girls at a birthday party. And yet I survived it and even benefited from the experience. And so too will we all from this. This week I've been thinking about social distancing and Jesus, who apparently was terrible at social distancing. Matthew 9 verses 10 through 11 tells the familiar story of Jesus having dinner at Matthew's house. Many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus never got the hang of social distancing. You remember the story that Luke told about uh, the 10 lepers that Jesus healed. While on his way to Jerusalem, Luke reads, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. Jesus never got the hang of social distancing. And really, neither should we. Oh, of course, we want to keep our physical distance from one another until this virus has passed. That's just good sense. But that doesn't mean we remain spiritually and emotionally distant from one another. It doesn't mean we let this virus claim all our time and attention. Jesus did his best while doing something else. We see this time and again in the Bible when miracle stories began with words like this, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, while Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Finish these sentences. While I was holed up in my house, I wrote letters to my children, grandchildren, and friends to tell them I loved them. Not emails, not texts, but honest-to-goodness letters that they squirreled away and will read time and again. While holed up in my house, I downloaded and read all those books I should have read in high school and college, but didn't. While holed up in my house, I got out the Fairfield directory and prayed for every family, every person. While holed up in my house, I phoned everyone I know who lived alone to make sure they were okay. 
while holed up in my house. I watched video clips of Jim Gaffigan because laughter doeth good like medicine. While holed up in my house, I put on a mask and gloves and made a coconut cream pie and dropped it off at a friend's house. Maybe you could do that for me. Or went on a walk, which is not only permitted, but encouraged. This is all to say that most of life doesn't happen because of our carefully laid plans. Life consists of what happens when we're busy doing something else. Those unexpected twists in the road we never anticipated, which nevertheless form and transform our lives. I was taking out the trash, for instance, when I met Joanne walking down the sidewalk on her way to a softball game. She was carrying a baseball mitt. How could I resist? A little over five years ago, our granddaughter Madeline wasn't even in our lives. Now she is our life. These unexpected developments that form and transform us. Now look at that. I got to thinking about my granddaughter and strayed from my point, which is this. We ought not get so good at social distancing that we start emotionally distancing ourselves from one another. Don't become an expert at keeping your distance that you forget and forsake others. This predicament will one day end. Probably not as soon as we would like, but it will end. We'll go back to work, back to school, back to church. We'll shake hands again and share meals and worship side by side. We're going to have the largest pitch in dinner in Fairfield history when this is over. We'll have concerts again, attend weddings and, and funerals and all the things we're used to doing together. But let's make doubly sure that during this season of separation, we work together to have a church, a nation, and a world worth coming back to. Peace to you all, love deeply, care much, laugh often, help your neighbor, and wash your hands. Thank you for sharing that silent worship with us. 
Uh, we have, do have some announcements for this week. Um, I wanted to remind everyone, Fairfield Friends Meeting now has an electronic option for giving through PayPal. Um, you may now send your donation to fairfieldgiving at gmail.com. Uh, if you can log into PayPal and choose the send the money to a friend option since you aren't purchasing goods or services. Um, and I'll post that information down below, but if you want to uh, continue to give to the Fairfield meeting during this time of uh, social distancing, um, you, you may do so through our PayPal. Um, and, and check the, the description in the video below for that information. Fairfield also has a long history of supporting the uh, QNOT Food Pantry in Poland, Indiana. For those who are watching who are not local to central Indiana, please go to foodpantries.org for a huge listing of all the food banks in your area. They could, uh, they could all use your help right now. I have a, a little something from the Outreach Committee that I wanted to share. The Outreach Committee at Fairfield hopes that this message finds you all healthy and staying busy and active. We want to update you on a few outreach concerns. As you know, when you place money or checks in our outreach baskets each Sunday, that money goes towards providing food for the QNOT Food Pantry as well as to a variety of local charities, including Family Promise, Stability Builders Network, The Lord's Pantry, and others, as well as to some national and international charities, uh, charities that Fairfield is uh, called to assist. Due to the immediate needs that are being created by our current national emergency, Outreach has responded as follows. We have made the decision to currently focus only on local and Fairfield family needs. We have immediately sent our budgeted 2020 funds to Family Promise and Stability Builders Network. We have provided immediate monetary assistance to the QNOT Food Pantry. Uh, regarding QNOT, we've been in frequent communication with Mabel at the pantry to assess how this is affecting their ability to provide food to those in need in their community. One of the most important concerns for them was that since children are now out of school, they are no longer getting breakfast and lunch provided by the school, which many of these families rely on. The area schools are still trying to fill those needs, but it is inadequate in many ways. Since we are unable to collect food every Sunday and deliver it to them at this time, Outreach has sent out monetary funds uh, to them so that they can purchase enough for breakfast and lunch uh, to cover a week for each child in a family. Some of the families that, frequently, that frequent the pantry have upwards of eight children. Uh, additionally, Owen County, the county that QNOT is in, and uh, it's one of the poorest in the state of Indiana, typically has seven food pantries for the county. They are down to three that remain open due to COVID-19. QNOT is beginning to see an uptick in the number of families coming through, and they expect that uh, only to continue to increase. They will continue to have great need there. We encourage you to continue supporting outreach during our hiatus from meeting. Checks should be made payable to Fairfield Friends Outreach Committee and sent to Stacy Denny at the address listed in your Fairfield directory or the email that was sent out this past Thursday. If you don't have that address, please send monetary donations to Stacy Denny Outreach Committee, Fairfield Friends Meeting, 10441 East County Road, 700 South, P.O. Box 45, Hamby, Indiana, 46113. Uh, and that information will also be in the video description down below. If you would like to specify that your money goes directly to QNOT during this time, please write for QNOT Food Pantry in the memo line of your check. Checks that don't have this note will go to the General Fund of Outreach, which supports all of our charities. This information is posted in the description below on the video too, so you don't have to keep backing up this video. We also have some information in the description below uh, on how you can help during this time, including volunteering, or supporting one of the listed local food banks. Please make sure you look at the relief resources links posted in the description as well. These links are incredibly helpful for anyone struggling during this time. Also, Family Promise has created two important relief resources and both are, are updated daily. Those friends who are able, since it is permissible to exercise, are encouraged to gather today at two o'clock at the Plainfield Aquatic Center on Vestal Road. We will leave from there and enjoy a walk together, observing the proper rules of distance and not shaking hands. I do hope you can join us. Take care, friends. We also have a special uh, bit of music provided by Amanda Ganey on the flute. Please enjoy. 
This is a Scottish tune called The Merry Making. All right, that's our video for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I wanna thank Ike Holman and Amanda Ganey for the music. I wanna thank those who shared their joys and concerns with us this week. And I also wanna thank Tony Holman, Laura J. Ballinger, and my wife, Laura Essex, for helping me bring this uh, video to you. Um, on that note, please enjoy my wife, Laura, having some troubles. Bye. Fall in love with listening. <laughs> it's okay, keep going. Wait, so do I like do I need to introduce it at all or just I have a reading you to just, share? Can you just read? <laughs> or you can say say good morning. <clears throat> okay. I promise you're, I'll cut this out. You're gonna give me out you're gonna give me outtakes. <laughs> <I am. laughs> you're just like it's hard to do when you're just like leaning at me. <laughs> okay. Where the winds ever gently blow, knowing it is here. <laughs> okay. <laughs>